My name is Martin Damon, and today I'll take you through the process of modifying vehicles to optimize the bridge carrying capacity. This webinar will cover the advantages and disadvantages of adding axles and changing the wheelbase. We'll aim to answer all your questions about why, when, and how to make these changes. The modified vehicles will be validated against the US federal bridge laws, and the calculations will be done using the Imperial measurement system. As you know, NTEA partnered with Truck Science last year. We welcome all NTEA members who are joining us this morning. Before we can do any vehicle modifications, we need to understand the US federal bridge laws. These laws determine the maximum weight that can be carried on the interstate highway system. By a few exceptions, the bridge formula is used to determine the maximum weight on any group of two or more consecutive axles. There are only two variables in this formula, the number of axles and the distance between the axles. Just to describe the distance in more detail, which is measured in feet and is measured between the outer axles of any axle group. In this example, the distance from the center of the front axle to the center of the rearmost axle is 21 feet, and there are four axles in the group. When we substitute those values into the bridge formula, we get a maximum limit of 56,000 pounds. The same principle can be applied for all the other axle groups in this vehicle combination, and those are axle one to two, axle one to three, then axle two to three, two to four, and three to four. In other words, any two or more consecutive axles. Now, increasing the number of axles and the distance between the axles may seem like the logical option for maximizing bridge carrying capacity. However, we need to optimize the vehicle um, by keeping in mind other practical considerations, such as spacing the chassis, turning radius, and the overall vehicle stability. This is an extract of the bridge table. So instead of uh, doing the bridge calculations using the formula, we can look up the maximum weight on this table by selecting the column for four axles and matching it with the distance at 21 feet to give us the same maximum limit of 56,000 pounds. If the vehicle only had three axles over the same distance, the limit would be 51,500 pounds. To demonstrate the process of modifying a vehicle, I'll do a live demo using our axle weight calculator. In the first scenario, we'll select a 6x4 chassis with a 16 foot dump body and we'll determine the maximum payload and axle carrying capacities. We'll then add a pusher axle to compare the difference to the carrying capacity. In the third step, I'll increase the wheelbase by three feet to show you how distance affects the overall bridge carrying capacity. And then in the last step, we'll add a second pusher and a 19 and a half foot body to optimize the configuration. I'll share my screen with you now. But in the previous webinar, we focused on gathering the information that's required to do an axle weight calculation. In today's session, we'll take advantage of that data and focus more on the calculations themselves. So for our first scenario, we'll select a Volvo VHD 6x4 with a new cab and a wheelbase of 224 inches. The graphic for the vehicle, the dimensions and the weights are all taken off the proposal document that was kindly supplied by Volvo. For the body, we'll select the Crystal 16 foot body which we already added in the previous webinar and obviously also supplied by Chris Steele. I'll increase the cab gap to the body to about four inches. And we'll just note that the body weight is five and a half thousand pounds, which in this case does not include the hoist. 
So I'll add the hoist from other equipment, especially because the hoist weighs about a thousand pounds. So I'll move the hoist into the doghouse and make sure it's included in our calculation because quite a bit of that weight will be distributed over the front axle. Looking at our payload, we'll see that um, our payload, our achievable payload right now is just over 23,000 pounds. And the limiting factor is the front axle. Front axle has a rating of 14,600 and we are grossing out at 14,600. Now an easy way to spot where the limiting factor is, is to look for the blue highlighted cell in the overload row. So you'll notice that we highlight the payload in blue and therefore to show what is limiting the payload, we highlight the cell for overload in the front axle column in this case. To draw down further on that limit, I can click on that to open the menu to show me what the limiting factors are. So we have two items here or two variables, the gross axle weight rating and the bridge limit. The bridge limit for a single axle is 20,000 pounds. And then the manufacturer's rating in this case is 14,600. And that would be the lesser of the axle, the tire, and the suspension rating, which in this case is then applied to the permissible for the front axle. And if we want to uh, optimize this vehicle further to carry more payload, we can now consider modifying the vehicle by adding axles or increasing the wheelbase. In this scenario, because the front axle is the limiting factor, we suggest uh, trying to add a pusher axle to see if we can take some of the weight off the front axle to carry more payload. In scenarios where the rear axles are the limiting factor, we could, could consider adding a pusher or a tag axle. And in scenarios where the overall bridge carrying capacity is the limiting factor, we could consider adding axles or increasing the wheelbase. So in this scenario, we'll add an extra axle. I'll add a pusher axle, which will be added just in front of the first driven axle. We can customize that uh, pusher axle by changing some of the default values. I'll start off by reducing the axle spacing, or by first of all, locking down the wheelbase to 224 inches. So we want to keep the original wheelbase to the center of the driven axles at 224 inches. Then the pusher axle will be spaced 48 inches in front of the first driven axle. We can also have a look at the weight of the pusher axle. The default weight is 1,480 pounds, uh, sorry, 1,500 pounds, which will change to 1,480 pounds. We'll leave the gross axle weight rating and the desired weight at 13,000 pounds that's a suitable default for our scenario. We can reduce the desired weight uh, to less than the gross axle weight rating in scenarios where we want to limit the weight on the pusher axle by controlling the air pressure to the suspension. We can also reduce the diameter of the tire for the pusher. Normally we have slightly smaller tires. I'll change that to 19 inches. I'll close the menu. Right, that immediately shows us that our payload has increased from 23,000 to 29,000 pounds, which is an increase of 6,000 pounds. And our overall limit has increased from what was 51,500 to 54,600, in this case, by adding the, the pusher axle. However, bridge is not necessarily the limit at this point. So whilst we're looking at the limit, you'll see the blue highlighted cell has moved from the front axle to the overall. The overall limit, if we drill down on the overall limit, we'll see that that is dictated by the gross vehicle weight rating or the bridge, the overall, uh, the bridge law. In this case, it's actually the gross vehicle weight rating that's limiting us. We can override that value and change it to 67,600, which is a value we've got uh, get from the proposal document from the manufacturer for this vehicle with a pusher axle. Once we've updated that, the overall bridge will become the limiting factor, 56,000. However, you'll notice that we don't even achieve the 56,000 because the limit now shifts 
to the rear axles. So whilst the payload did increase slightly, we cannot take full advantage of the uh, overall bridge because the rear axles, that's axle two to four, are limiting us. This is probably a good opportunity to have a look at all the bridge groups. So we'll do that under the bridge view. These are the, the all the important bridge groups that we'll consider. We'll start off with the front axle. Remember front axles, I mentioned earlier already, are limited to 20,000 pounds. This is actually an exception to the bridge formula and also applies to the pusher axle on its own. Then axle three to four is limited to 34,000 pounds. Those are the driven axles. And that, that is also an exception to the bridge formula and applies to tandem axles where the distance between the axles is greater than or equal to 40 uh, inches and, or sorry, greater than 40 inches and less than or equal to 96 inches. That's also why we show this dimension in inches rather than in feet. So another exception to the bridge uh, formula. Axle two to four, which now includes the pusher and the driven axles, is limited to 42,000 pounds. This we can read directly off the bridge table for dimensions greater than 96 inches and less than 108 inches. It's greater than eight feet and less than nine feet. So we're still working in inches up to nine feet. When the dimension gets greater than or equal to nine feet, which is the case for axle group one to four, we show the dimensions in feet. This makes it easier to cross-reference the bridge table. And these limits are then calculated using the bridge formula. So the distance for group one to four is 20 feet and 11 inches, which we round, we round it off to 21 feet. And if we look that up on the bridge table, we'll get to the 56,000 pounds, which I showed you early on during the slides. Now adding pusher axles does complicate the axle weight distribution calculations considerably. To show you this, we'll go to the chassis view. We will notice that we've got an original chassis weight and a modified chassis weight. What happens when we add the pusher axle is that by adding the pusher axle, the technical wheelbase changes. If you remember, the original wheelbase to the center of the driven axles, which is also shown here, is 224 wheel uh, inches. In the case of the 6x4 without the pusher axle, the technical wheelbase is also 224 inches, measured to the center of the driven axles. However, when we add the pusher axle, because the pusher axle takes some of the weight, it changes the technical wheelbase. And you'll notice that the technical wheelbase is slightly less, so 205.6 inches. This is a critical dimension as it is used to recalculate the original chassis weight. It's also used to distribute the pusher, the weight of the pusher over the front and the rear. And it is used to uh, calculate the distribution of all the items added to the vehicle. And I'll just show you an example of that under the CG center of gravity view. So all the items, including pay payload, body, all the items that have their own center of gravity will be distributed over the front and the rear using the new technical wheelbase. Now, the, the underlying <laughs> formulas or calculations are, are fairly complicated to recalculate the chassis weight, but I have put together a few slides to hopefully make, that, uh, make it much easier to understand. And when we're done with this live demo, we'll go back to the slides and I'll run you through those calculations in more detail. For now, we'll just note that the original chassis weight needs to be recalculated, pusher needs to be added, and we end up with a modified chassis weight. We'll return to our summary view. All right, if we want to optimize this vehicle any further, we might consider adding another pusher or maybe stretching out the wheelbase. So if we look at our limiting factor, we'll notice it's still the rear axles, so all the rear axles from axle two to axle four. Now, 
it might be tempting to think we could fit another pusher axle into the space on the chassis. However, we would need to first consider uh, the arrangement of the fuel tank, the battery box, the exhaust, and the exhaust after treatment system. These components typically use up some of the chassis space and may uh, make it impossible to add another axle. To demonstrate this, I will add the fuel tank for this uh, vehicle. I'll select that from other equipment. Search for fuel tanks. In this case, it's a 75 gallon uh, tank, which I'll move into position just behind the steps and just below the chassis. So that is uh, the approximate or fairly accurate position of the fuel tank for this vehicle, which immediately shows us that there isn't enough space to fit another pusher axle. Therefore, if we wanted to increase the carrying capacity of this vehicle, we would first need to increase the wheelbase if we wanted to add another pusher, because maybe we don't want to add a tag axle. So we'll, we'll try that now. So we'll, uh, to change the wheelbase, there are two ways in which we can change the wheelbase. We can either swap out the vehicle with a vehicle from the public library that already has a longer wheelbase. And we do have this vehicle uh, provided uh, by Volvo uh, with a 260-inch uh, wheelbase. The second option for changing the wheelbase is to do it manually by overriding the default value, changing it from 224 to 260 inches. But as soon as I apply that change, the overall bridge limit will increase from 56,000 pounds to 58,000 pounds. So the increase in wheelbase by roughly three feet in this case, or exactly three feet, will give us an extra 2,000 pounds on overall bridge carrying capacity. We'll move the body to the rear for practical reasons, and also move the hoist back into the doghouse. And that will give us, still give us our payload of roughly 29,000 pounds that we had in the previous scenario. So we haven't really achieved more in terms of payload carrying capacity, even though we've achieved a little bit more in terms of overall bridge carrying capacity. And the reason for that is that the rear axles are still the limiting factor. Just to show you what would happen if we uh, increase the payload manually, I could override the payload and just increase it ever so slightly, it would highlight the rear axles in red to show an overload. So we show a 365 pound overload or 0.9%. Uh, deselecting the override will maximize the payload again and return it to the maximum legal payload for this combination. Now that we've created a little bit more space in the chassis, we can add another axle. So because the rear axle is lim the limiting factor, we could consider adding a pusher or a tag. In this scenario, it's more practical to add a, a pusher axle uh, at the uh, in the middle of the chassis. I'll do that now. So we'll add a second pusher. Again, we can customize the pusher, uh, reduce the axle spacing to 48 inches to limit the space it uses on the chassis, and we can change the weight to 1480 pounds and leave the rating at 13,000 pounds. Okay, our payload has now increased to 32,000 pounds or almost 33,000 pounds where the rear axles are the limiting factor. Whilst we still have quite a, a considerable amount of spare carrying capacity on the front axles. So what we might consider here is to add a longer body or swap this body out for a longer body where the center of gravity of the payload is further forward, transferring more weight onto the steering axle. So I'll do that now. I'll remove this body and swap it out with the, the 19 and a half foot crystal apex body. Again, I'll just move the body back to create some clearance behind the cab and move the hoist back into the doghouse. And we now have a much higher payload of, of 36,000 pounds. Where the balance over the axles looks pretty good, 
front axles are well utilized, but not uh, near the, the limit. Pusher axles uh, utilized to about 10,000 pounds each. The driven is at 30,000 pounds out of the possible 34,000. The rear axles, the driven, the, all the rear axles combined, axle two to five, are very close to the limit, but not, uh, not right on the limit. And then the overall bridge carrying capacity of 63,000 pounds becomes the overall limit. We go back to the bridge view, just to have a look at that. We'll see X one to five, distance is 23 feet, 11 inches, which we round up to 24 feet to give us the overall bridge carrying capacity of 63,000 pounds. This is probably as far as we'll go with the live demo. I'll just check in with Jens to see if there are any questions so far. Uh, hi, Martin. Yeah, um, there's a question that's just come up now. Um, does the turning radius module use the technical wheelbase? Okay. Uh, all right. Let's let me just go back to the summary view. Okay, the turning radius. It is something I, I forgot to mention just now. When we did, when we increased the wheelbase, one of the disadvantages is that the turning radius will obviously be bigger, and it will be far di more difficult to maneuver the vehicle. I will show you the turning radius. Okay, does it use uh, the technical wheelbase? And, and it, it is actually correct. The turning radius, if we select the turning radius and the smallest turning radius, you'll notice that it uses the technical uh, wheelbase. I'll just have a look at that. 221, it's probably just rounded slightly. I just want to go back to the side view. So it's 221 inches for the technical wheelbase. That's correct. It uses the technical wheelbase when the pusher axles are down and are not steerable pusher axles. When these are steerable pusher axles, the effect of the pusher axles is negligible. It's about the, it's practically the same as the axles being in the raised position. And in that scenario, the wheelbase for turning will be measured to the center of the driven axles. And I'll show you that through an example, we'll raise those axles so under the axles, I'll start off with the front pusher and just raise it. And as soon as I raise it, you'll notice that the wheelbase for turning will move back slightly. And if I raise the, the other pusher as well, the wheelbase for turning is all the way to the center of the driven axles. So that is the worst case scenario where the axles are both raised or where they are both steered for that matter giving us a turning radius of 454 inches. So it's quite a big turning radius. Now I'll just check uh, with Jens there to make sure that that answers the question. So the question is, does the technical wheelbase get used uh, for the turning radius calculation? Yes, it does, when the axles are not steered. Um, there's, there's another question that's come up here, Martin, is um, do you increase the overall GVWR of the vehicle by adding a pusher or tag axle? Yes, in the example, we did increase it, uh, the GVWR. So we'll go to the total and just drill down. The GVWR, in this case, we, um, we got it off the proposal document from the manufacturer. So the original va value, if we deselect that, was 54,600 pounds. That was the, the spec sheet for the six by four chassis. We did get a proposal document from the manufacturer with one pusher axle, and the GVWR for that was 67,600, which is why we've increased it here. But it is a value that you do need to check with the manufacturer to make sure that uh, adding the, uh, that by adding the axles you can increase the gvwr there may be other limitations from the manufacturer that would prevent you from taking full advantage of all the additional uh, carrying capacities of the axles um, those, those limitations could be on on the drive on the diff itself could be on the braking system it could be on the chassis so there are various manufacturer limits that could uh, could uh, play a role there. So always talk to your dealer or the manufacturer themselves before adjusting the GVWR. Okay, anything else, Ian? Uh, 
Uh, I think that's it for now. I just just say if there are any more questions or if uh, if anyone needs more clarification, just just keep keep asking the questions and Martin will address them uh, towards the end. Yeah. So we've got about another uh, ten or so minutes left for the to to go through the slides with the the formulas that I mentioned, um, and then a few more minutes for for questions as well. Just to show you how to drop those axles again, we'll drop those first. The one pusher and then the other one. So you can demonstrate the pusher up, pusher down scenario as well. Okay, let's return to the slides then. Okay, as promised, here are the slides for those um, calculations where we modified the original chassis and determined the uh, modified chassis weights. Um, so th these calculations are fairly complex. So I've broken them down into five steps, starting with the original chassis. So for the original chassis, we need to make uh, take note of the chassis weight, which in this case is 16,343 pounds and the center of gravity of the chassis from the front axle, 104.1 inches. Okay, then in step two, we determine the weight distribution ratio between the pusher and driven axles. In other words, we want to establish how much of the weight that is carried by all the rear axles is carried by the pusher and how much is carried by the driven axles because it's not an even distribution over these axles. They have different carrying capacities and therefore they pick up uh, dif uh, different loads. Uh, we can do this calculation by taking the 13,000 pounds on the pusher axle and the 40,000 pounds on the driven axles to determine that just over 75.5% of the weight coming down on all the rear axles will be distributed onto the driven axles and roughly 25% of it will be distributed on the pusher axle. So that's all controlled by the desired weight, which I mentioned earlier on. And typically the desired weight is the same as a gross axle weight rating or can be slightly less if we want to limit the weight carried by the pusher axle. These slides uh, will also be included in the recording, uh, which will allow you more time to look at the details of, of the formulas. For the purpose of the webinar, I'll spend most of the time explaining the logic behind these calculations. But you are welcome to uh, send through your questions there on anything specific, and uh, I'll do my best to answer that as well. In step three, we calculate the new technical wheelbase. Okay, so we, I mentioned that quite a bit and, and the importance of the technical wheelbase during the demo. So the first step uh, to determine the new technical wheelbase is to calculate the distance from the pusher axle to the center of the driven axles. So these are the sort of two groups that we're considering at the rear, the pusher and the driven axles. And the distance from between those is 75 inches. We then apply the percentage that is carried by the driven axles, which we determined in the previous step, which was 75.5%. We apply that percentage to this distance to give us this dimension of 56.6 inches. And that is measured from the pusher to where the technical wheelbase will end. That's the new technical wheelbase. That's the end point of the technical wheelbase. And once we have this dimension, we can uh, add it to the 149 inches from the front axle to the pusher axle to get to the new technical wheelbase. Okay, so this is probably one of the most important calculations uh, when adding a pusher axle. In step four, we recalculate the original chassis weight over the front and the rear. Remember in step one, I mentioned that we're just taking note of the sh original chassis weight, which was 16,343 pounds. And we also noted 
its center of gravity in relation to the front axle, 104.1 inches. So in this step, we want to calculate the redistribution of the original 6x4 chassis by applying the new technical wheelbase. To do this, we take turning moments about a point. So if we assume that the front axle is the pivot point, and we want to keep the chassis balanced and level in a horizontal position, then the force, the force acting in the clockwise direction around that point, less the force acting in the anti-clockwise direction, must equal zero. And that is this uh, calculation here. So when we normalize that formula, we get to the front and rear axle rating, or, or the recalculated front and rear chassis weights, in this case, 8,071 pounds in the front and 8,200 on the rear. But the overall chassis weight is exactly the same. It's just that the distribution over the front and all the rear axles is different. All right, I hope I've managed to explain that. Um, and I hope that this graphic illustration makes it easier to understand. Now, I do welcome any feedback that you can give about uh, these calculations. Then in the, in the final step, we also distribute the weight of the pusher axle according to the new technical wheelbase. So we apply the same uh, method that we used in the previous step, with taking turning moments of about a point to distribute the pusher axle. And in this case, uh, most of the weight of the pusher axle will end up on the rear. So just over 1,000 pounds and 400 pounds on the front, because obviously the pusher axle is much closer to the uh, end point of the technical wheelbase. Now the weight carried by the driven axle, or sorry, by the pusher axle and the two driven axles is also shown here. And that is calculated based on that ratio that, are, or that we determined in step two. So remember we had the ratio or the split, 25% on the pusher and 75% on the driven. So for that, we take the weight that is on all the rear axles, 25% of that weight will be on the pusher and 75% on the driven axles. Okay, that completes the formulas and method and the logic for the recalculation of the original chassis weight to get to the modified chassis weight. And uh, we can probably spend a few more minutes on that if there are questions on that. Um, Maybe what I'll do is just run through it very quickly again, just to, to highlight the five steps. So, so the first step is to take some notes about the original chassis, because we need to redistribute the original chassis when the technical wheelbase changes as a result of adding the pusher axle. Then in the second step, we determine the ratio or the split between the pusher and the driven axles, how much weight is carried by the pusher and how much by the driven axles. In step three, we calculate the new technical wheelbase by applying the, the, the ratios determined uh, in the previous step. Step four, we recalculate the original chassis weight. So we're assuming just the six by four chassis, taking turning moments about a point to redistribute the weight over the front and all the rear axles. And then in the final step, we add the pusher axle and also distribute that to the front and the rear to give us our new modified chassis weight, front, rear, and total, and then split out the rear uh, weight split into the pusher and the driven axles. Interesting to note, for example, if you have a look at the value for the front axle, uh, the original chassis weight is 8,750 pounds, and the modified chassis weight is 8,478, so slightly lighter. We we'll take some of the weight off the front axle by adding the, the pusher axle and imposing load on the road. In fact, the pusher axle uh, yeah, carries slightly more than its weight. Okay, all right, we've got a few more slides to get through and then we can take some more questions. Or do we have some questions, Jens, that are specifically relate to, to the modified chassis? Um, 
Not, not to the modified chassis at the moment, um, but there are some questions I might, uh, I might ask you to address um, via the app once you've, once you've gone through the, um, the slides there. Sure. Okay. All right. You can visit our uh, website, trackscience.com, to register for a fully functional uh, trial version of the app. NTA uh, membership qualifies you for an extended 30-day trial period. Um, NTA members also get a $50 discount on an annual subscription, which is uh, normally $449 US dollars. Therefore, for NTA members, $399. We will publish the recording of this webinar to, uh, to our YouTube, our Truck Science uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, please remember to subscribe to our channel there so that you get notified when we add uh, new videos. You can also watch previous webinars here. And then the, the next webinar, uh, which will deal with the topic of calculating axle weight, weights whilst optimizing the payload, will take place in the, on the last Thursday in August. You will receive an invitation for this webinar by email. Okay, Jens, you want to ask those questions now? Okay, um, yeah, so there's a, there's a question on um, how to modify chassis weight. So um, within the app, so, so if you change the, the axle or suspension models, uh, how, do you, how do you update the chassis weight? Okay, I probably even forgot that. I'll share my screen again. I'll just go back to that. Thank you for pointing that out and reminding me. When I changed the wheelbase, I completely forgot to uh, update the chassis weights. Um, so what we could do here is just have a look at that. Uh, by clicking on the chassis weight, you'll see the chassis weight original. So we have the original front and rear. Um, and I might, I might just start off with the original chassis. So I'll just go home. I won't save this calculation. I'll start with the 224 in chassis again. And we'll keep it very simple just to focus on the difference in the chassis weights. So from the proposal document, these were the chassis weights for the front and the rear. When we increased the wheelbase to 260, by default, the chassis weights remain exactly the same. I should have actually updated these by clicking on the chassis weight, overriding the value on the front. That value of the proposal document is 8852. And on the rear, let's override the chassis weight here to 7695 pounds. A difference of 200 pounds overall for the chassis, which translates to about 65 pounds per foot. Now it may not seem like a lot, but it but we recommend always using uh, the accurate information for, for the chassis weights. So thank you for pointing that out. It, it's it's a, a, the chassis weights are the starting point of the whole calculation. And the more accurate they are, the more accurate your final calculation will be. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, goodbye. And remember to complete uh, the webinar rating.